And some of y'all sort of forgot your names, but uh, I look at you and I know you. And I don't know most of your names, I guess, really, but uh, I know you know you by face, and I'm glad to see you here. And I hope next time I come back, whenever that is, I hope you're still around. I'm going to be looking for you, and I hope you're still by. And uh, let me say this. Now, i got a building up there in Canton, and uh, that thing needs broke in. And uh, we've been we've been making a try at it now. We've had some fellows up there trying to, they've been trying. Brother Tarkington, he tried last, and he did a pretty good job, and come close. And I think if we turn Brother Joe Williams loose and turn you fellows all loose together, I believe they would do the job. And uh, I'd like to invite you folks up there. August will be fine. Uh, towards the end of August now, somewhere around the last week or so of August. That'll be fine if you can get the fellows to come. And you folks, my old Baptist here, you come on. And uh, we're not as hard to find as you are. <laughs> Now, I took me, I looked on that speedometer there, and I took me a 280-mile trip down here to Mount Hope Baptist, and I know it's 245, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just wasn't thinking too straight this morning, and I played follow the leader, and I was leading, and I, I misled everybody, <laughs> and then Harold Welch, he played uh, follow the leader. Brother Joe was smart. He got off by himself, <laughs> and Brother Harold Welch, he was something else. I thought I was going to pull his old race car tricks once again, but uh, we got here somehow or another. By the grace of God, we got here, and I'm glad that I came, and there's a... Uh, you know, I was like, uh, I forget who it was, Brother Bruce said he just about didn't come. And I had all kind of excuses. I mean, 250 miles and gasoline shortage and uh, there's plenty to do. Pastor's always Friday, you know, there's plenty to do. You can always find more to do than you can handle. You always got to leave stuff undone. And I just about didn't come. And then I thought, well, I'll come on down. Brother Wayne's always been a real good friend, always has really helped our church. And I'll come on down and do, do my uh, fellows real good. And I called Brother Joe, and it don't take much for him. He's not like me. <laughs> he says, if I hear about preaching, I want to get around. And uh, he's, he's going to come on down, so we come on down. And I'll tell you what, I have not been disappointed. And uh, I have a hard time in a situation like this. I'm not a man of words. Some guys of nature, they can get up and they can just carry on. They can just ramble. I mean, they don't have to have much to say. They can just get on and they can ramble for a while. And they can cover 30, 40 minutes and just any time they feel, I can just get up and go. I'm not that way. I'm a fellow that I never trust myself. Before I got saved, if somebody asked me a question, I didn't answer, I shut up. <laughs> I didn't know how to talk. I always sat clear in the back in the corner, and I didn't want to shake hands when I come in the building. I just wanted to sit down, hear the preaching, get out as quick as I could. I didn't want to, nobody to talk to me, nothing like that. And uh, I was never a man of words, and so I never trusted myself. And preaching hasn't come easy for me, and studying doesn't come easy for me. And uh, so uh, I'm glad the Lord made it easy for me. Now, you've all been preached on everything there is to be preached to. And you're tired and weary. If you've been here all day, you're tired and weary. And Brother Jerry, he covered up for two preachers there. So I've got it easy. I don't have to say much. Uh, I don't have to say very little, really. If I had the, if I could read the scriptures like I should, not corrupt them, I could minister to your heart, reading the reading the Word of God, a few verses of the Word of God, and send you home. You had it. You had all you need. You had plenty. But I don't guess I've got quite that kind of power and that quite a uh, quite that kind of purity about me. I wish I did have. Uh, someday I guess we'll be around the Lord and we'll see what it's all about. I've been around a few fellows that have had the power of God on them like that. I remember one time Brother Harry Munn, one time read some scriptures, and Brother Harry read the scriptures so slow, Romans chapter number 8, never forget it. He read the scriptures so slow that, I'll tell you, that word of God just went in and it just pierced, and it just stayed there, and I got every bit of what he had to say. I loved it, I never forgot it, never forgot it. And uh, I don't have a lot to say this evening now, I'm going to preach you from Luke chapter number 10. Talk to you about how to be different. You can turn your Bibles. And the Bible says the word fitly spoken is like apples of golden pictures of silver. And so I'm just trusting God. After everything's been said, I'm just trusting God to help me say something, be a benefit to somebody. And like I said, I not know, uh, won't be no whole uh, great big old thing here for me to say, but I'm going to say something, preach a little bit to you, and hopefully Lord do something with it. And I don't know what your need is tonight. Maybe God will meet your need through his word and through the reading of the word or at least through the preaching of the word of God. All right, Luke chapter number 10, verse number 38. Luke 10, verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was comforted about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and, tro careful and troubled about many things, one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you we can come to you, Lord. And I just pray and ask you to help me as I preach the word of God. Lord, I want to say something to be a blessing to these people. Lord, I've been encouraged, and my countenance has been sharpened, Lord. And I just pray now that you might help me to say something 
be of help to somebody. God, I don't know what the needs are here. Lord, you know the needs. I'm not even interested. God, I want you to help me. As I try to preach this message, Lord, that I might be a blessing to these folks. Lord, that I might be an encouragement and help unto them. Lord, that somehow, by the grace of God, Lord, I could magnify your son. Lord, if I could magnify you, Lord, I'd just be pleased. I'd be thrilled, Lord, if I could magnify you. God, do everything to me, Lord. And Lord, I renounce the flesh. Lord, I ask you to do something now to preach unto your word. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Now this passage here, Luke chapter number 10, comes immediately after the story of the Good Samaritan. This is the story of Mary and Martha. And hence you have a lot of times in churches, you have what's called the Mary and Martha group. Missionary groups and the women get together and they do things for the missionaries and try to help the missionaries out and they call them Mary and Martha groups. And of course there's much about these two sisters here that, that's similar. Just like you and I, there's much about you and I that's similar. There's not everything about us that's similar. I appreciate men that are individuals. I appreciate men that have individuality about them. And in the passage here, there's a lot that's similar, but Jesus Christ, he calls attention to that which is different about Mary and Martha. Now, if you get reading John chapter number 11, John chapter number 12, the similarities are many. For example, they both came from the same town because, of course, they're sisters. They both came from Bethany. Also, in the Word of God, in John chapter number 11, the Bible says that Jesus loved Martha and uh, her sister, and of course he loved Lazarus also. Not only that, the Bible says that there came a time whenever Martha ran to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, but Mary sat still in her house. And of course, Mary, she was grieving over the loss of her brother, and she sat still in her house there, and she like somebody sitting down by the wills and weeping by the wills of Zion. She just sat there and didn't move. But you know, the time came whenever, uh, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ came on in, and whenever the Lord Jesus Christ came, the Bible says that Mary arose quickly and went unto him. There was a time there whenever Martha said to the Lord Jesus Christ, she said, my brother had not died. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. And of course, a little bit later on, when Mary comes in the presence of Jesus, she said also, Lord, if you'd been here, said my brother had not died. And a little bit different there, she fell at Jesus' feet, and of course, she worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's much about them that are similar, just a little bit different as far as John chapter 11 and 12 are concerned. Now in John chapter 12, there's Martha, and of course she's noted for serving. In the passage here in Luke chapter number 10, the Bible says that she's cumbered about much serving. And the difference, of course, the distinction is that Mary's a woman who's concerned about the Word of God, and Jesus said that is needful that Mary, Mary has chosen. And she's chosen a good part, and it's needful. Listen, my friend, there can be a lot about you and I that's similar but the thing that's going to make us distinct and make us individual characters is better than the Word of God. I talked to a fellow one time and he said, when I look at my wife's sister, he says, I see my wife. When I look at the problems that she has, he says, I see my wife. He says, they came out of the same mold. They're the same type of people. But you know something, my friend? I'll tell you the distinction, of course, evidently being of great importance, is this, that Mary hath chosen the Word of God. And you and I today, we need to choose the Word of God. We need to stake everything upon the Word of God. It don't make any difference what folks think of us. It don't make any difference whether they fellowship with us or not. I think about what that brother said there. He said he didn't have a lot of fellowship for a while. Listen, I understand what it's all about. I determined a long time ago, I'm going to fellowship with God and with His Father and with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It don't make any difference whether I fellowship with anybody in Spark Time. It don't make any difference. They don't like the Word of God. They don't like for what I stand for. It don't make any difference. As long as God the Father is right, I can fellowship with Him. And friend, the throne of grace is open to us tonight. Now, the distinction here, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't call a distinction to put one above another. And what I've got to say tonight, I'm not trying to elevate anybody. As far as I'm concerned, there's equal basis. You're saved by the grace of God. I am saved by the grace of God. I like the way Brother Joe Williams handled his preaching service up there. There were no big shots. Jesus was a big shot. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And you know, uh, I know how the fellows feel, and sometimes you, you feel incapable, and yet as long as somebody glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm with it 100%. Jesus Christ did not make a distinction to put one, Mary, above Martha. He didn't do it to cause envy one to another. My friend, he did it to provoke you and I to love and the good works and to love the Word of God and stay by the Word of God. You get reading about Martha and the Word of God and she's cumbered. She's slap wore out. You know that happens to Christians. You get saved, it's brand new. You're on it. You're going. You're on fire for God. Friend, I'll tell you in time, you're going to get cumbered. You don't stay around the Word of God. You're going to get tired of serving. They're going to wear you out, friend. You're going to have to stay around the Word of God. See, the woman got in there and she worked like a dog. 
I mean, she was not a lazy woman. She was a woman not afraid to work. She is somebody that would do the job. Listen, she came up with problems. And the problems stem from the fact she did not stay around the Word of God. You fellows that are preachers here tonight, listen, you're in the work. You've got a job to do. I appreciate it, man. Get into the job. But friend, if you don't stay around the Word of God, that work will consume you and you die on the job. She's cumbered with much serving. What was her problems? Number one, self-pity was a problem. I mean, she said, Lord, don't you care? She says, I'm cumbered with much serving. She got feeling sorry for herself. I can understand that. She just got tired. She just got weary. I understand that. I've been weary myself. I labored in a basement of a home for a while. It seemed like God was never going to move. I always got the feel if God don't do something right now, it's not happening, but it is. It is. God just, He don't move quite as quick as we want Him to move all the time. He's not our command, we're to be His command. So I just kept on going. But I guarantee there were times I was weary. There was times I'd get so weary, I didn't know which end was up. I guess I preached to myself that verse in Galatians 6 verse 9, and let us not be weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap when we faint not. Over, over, and over again. And I just bought Jesus in my sleep. I mean, let us not be weary. There were times my father-in-law, that old pop there, I should have brought him down here. He got a little kidney problem. I hate for him to take the ride, but he knows a lot of the preachers and loves a lot of you all. And I'll tell you what, he had probably been a lift and a blessing to him. But he could read me, I guess, like nobody else could read me. And there'd be times when I'd get weary and I'd get discouraged. And I'd go back trying to get ground. Every farmer around there say, well, I'll tell you what, go on and see this guy. I said, okay, friend. I said, just ask me to pray about it. I said, I don't covet your ground. Not at all. I said, just pray about it. If God puts it on your heart, give me a call back. Leave a telephone number with him. Go on to the next place. But you know, after about a year or two, that type of thing, you think there's nobody that's ever going to give you some ground. Tell you some ground. Not give it to you. Sell you some ground. Put a building up on. But you know something? You just get weary like that. No time not go. The fellow finally said he'd give us some ground. I'll tell you what, where we're at right now, I must have went back to that fellow's farm equipment place 25 times. Before we ever got a piece of ground, I'd walk out of there sometimes and sit down in that car. I'd sit down in that car and my father in law say, Art, you're not getting discouraged, are you? You're not getting weary, are you? He knew me. He knew me. I'll tell you something, friend. You and your ministry, you won't get weary unless you stay around the Word of God. You let that work consume you and you get all wrapped up in that work, that thing will break you down. Oh, Martha, she got feeling like says, Lord, you left me alone to to do the preaching or to, to do the work here. She said, Lord, it's me alone. And she got feeling kind of lonely for herself, something like Elijah. And he felt like, I, I'm, a, I'm alone, Lord. And sometimes people that way. And I suppose sometimes uh, there are folks here in this church, Mount Hope Baptist, you felt that way. And you felt like, where are they at? Where's the, where are the workers at? Where are those who do the job at? Where are they at? You're not around. You're not around. We put that structure up out there and there's a fellow in the church. Brother Wayne knows him. Had us over the house a couple of times when Brother Wayne preached for me. I mean, they're precious to my heart and they're precious to my heart tonight. That fellow, I declare, man, he could look at something about two or three minutes. He could figure that thing out. And I mean, he was apt to do just fine thing on that church. And he did. Anytime those carpenters needed some help, they called for David. But you know, the time came when David says, where are they at? And wherever more help was asked for, where are they at? I made excuses for some of the men of my church well they're not here because and uh, they're not here because of this and they're not here because of that but friend I could only do that so long and finally I said they just ain't here David I'm sorry man but they're just not here you know what that fellow rode that ship out with me I mean they he practically built that building with a couple other fellows there I mean they did they worked like fools got right out to the end of that building and finally I don't know what happened that fellow as far as I know just got cumbered with butt serving Never spent a lot of time in the Word of God and you're not around now. Yeah. Still, friends, family still comes. But Daddy, he just got what serving alone. Martha, she's something like that. She had a problem. Self pity. She felt like Lord's too just too much, the load's just too heavy. Lord, you left me alone to do the job. But you know, not only that, she had a problem with spiritual pride. And you know it's kind of a thing where she wanted she wanted the Lord Jesus Christ to get on Mary. Uh, Lord, she's left me to serve alone. Lord, why don't you go to her body? Lord, why don't you get on her body? 
Why don't you get on her, Lord? Thought of what? Get on her about it. Now, how she felt about the thing. That's just old spirits of pride. It's all the mounts too. Why she got careful and troubled about many things, have a little thing upset her. I got people in my church that way. And I know whenever they get that way, I know they're not reading the Bibles. You know how I know that? Because of my own life. When I'm reading the Bible, I'm not, I'm not easily offended. Whenever I'm reading the Bible, every little, when I'm not reading the Bible, every little thing seems to get to me. Yeah. I get real picky. I get real fussy about every little thing. When I'm in the Word of God, listen, I realize I've got my own problems. I got a job to do myself. And if they do what they're supposed to do, that's all well and good. I don't care about them like I care about my own condition. When I'm not reading the Word like I should, I get all wrapped up in them. Man of my church sings in the choir. And he fusses. Well, how come we only sing one song and not two? Well, how come we only sing in two songs and not three? Well, how come we only sing in three songs and not four? Why don't we stand around the piano and sing instead of doing like you're doing it? And so it was something. What about prayer meeting? How come prayer meeting wasn't like this right revival meeting? And I think every service got to be like a revival meeting. And not, friend, sometimes you get done, thank God. Amen. Sometimes you just have a prayer meeting. Amen. Some of the services are just routine services. But this fellow just thinks everything's got to be a revival meeting. And he thinks everything's got to go his way. And it's just one little bitty thing after another. And he's just careful and troubled about many things. And I'll tell you something, if you're not careful, you're going to be out. If I hadn't gone around and played nursemaid many a time over, he'd be gone already just because of little bitty things. That's the way Martha was. That's the way she was. Not only that, she had a problem with scriptural perseverance. But I mean, she, she wasn't a total dumbbell. She's like some of you all. She spent some time in the Word of God. She just didn't spend enough time in the Word of God. I mean, she did, she did knew a little bit about the Word of God. She just didn't have it all like she should have had. She wasn't around the Bible enough. I bet a lot of ladies that way here today. You ladies, I know you got your jobs to do and things you've got to do out in those homes. And I know there's much to do and a woman's work is never done. But boy, I do take some time and spend time in the Scriptures. I can tell my wife when she's reading her Bible when she's not. I know her actions towards me. I know her actions towards the church. When she's not in the Bible, she's just frustrated. You and your people. Pfft. Other times when she's in the Word of God, she said, boy, you sure got you a bunch of people. <laughs> You know what the difference is? The difference is the Word of God. Amen. It's going to be a difference for you. One time a man, he's cutting down a tree on Sunday. And uh, that old tree, it was a dead and dried up tree. He got him an axe out. And he began chopping away at that thing. Every time he took a look, a look at that thing, that thing just convicted his heart. Number one, he shouldn't have been messing around with it on Sunday. And he says, "Why wow, you're dead and dried up just like that tree and only fit to burn. And take another lick with that thing. Said, you're dead and dried up and only fit to burn. And take another lick. You're dead and dried up and only fit to burn. And Martha was that way because she didn't spend time in the book. And you, my friend, if you get out of the Word of God, hurry and get back. You'll be dead, dried up, withered to bone, and filled to burn. Not to feed God's people. Not to feed God's people. Dear friend, let me say to you now, if you're weary here tonight, now, I don't guess anybody is. If you came in weary and you've been here very long, you're not going to stay weary around the preaching like we've had today. But if you are and it's sin, get it out. And if it's just because you're serving and you're, you're loaded down, then, friend, the Word of God is the answer for you. Now, a distinction is drawn by Jesus, and, of course, Mary is commended. Here's old sis, she's cumbered, but Mary is commended. In verse number 42, notice the Word of God. It says, But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, she evidently received Jesus just like Martha did. And you know, Martha, she's a good woman to receive Jesus. I mean, there's Zacchaeus in Luke chapter number 19. The Bible says it. He received Jesus joyfully into his house. He's commended for that. In 2 Kings chapter number 4, there's a great woman, only place in the Bible, spoken of a great woman, and she took the man of God and said, Come on into my house. And God commended her for it. She's called a great woman in the Bible. Now, Mary's evidently that way also implied in the Word of God. She has sat at Jesus' feet and heard His Word. Now, she's not sitting down and just, you know, like the crucifixion of Jesus, sitting down and they watched Him there, sitting by and watching the action. She's not somebody who's just sitting down and getting lazy and at ease in Zion. She sat down all right, 
She sat down because she wasn't laying the Bible. Now, brother, listen. You're going to have to sit down and take time and study the Bible. You want to learn some Bible? You're going to have to study it. You have to sit at Jesus' feet and learn some Bible. Appreciate Brother Joe. Brother Joe calls me up every so often about a Bible question. I can't answer him, but he, I don't know why he calls me, but I appreciate it. He, he helps my, I don't know what. He hurts my pride, I guess. <laughs> Whatever you might say. But anyhow, I know one thing. He's not just getting up here and, and ranting and raving at you. He's studying the Word of God. Listen, friend, you've got to do it. Mary sat down. She sat at Jesus' feet. One time, Brother Welch and I was out. And we was out uh, talking to a fellow one time. He said he didn't have any assurance of his salvation. Didn't think he was even saved. So all I knew to do was let's make sure of it. If you're not sure, make sure of it. And so we took the Word of God and said, now this is what God said uh, to get saved. And, uh, of course, he called upon Lord Jesus Christ, and he got saved, and he come alive. And uh, that fellow had been saved about two weeks, and I took him over to the church house with me, do a little visiting. Now, not my church, another church that I used to go to. And I took that fellow over there, and that fellow, honestly, they, we got back in that office there. That visitation man says, hey, Terry, come on out here with me. Took that fellow out in the hall, and one that fellow to take and start running the bus route. That fellow didn't need to run a bus route. He'd maybe help somebody sometime. He needed to be under the Word of God. He did the Word of God. That fellow man, they took him out there, run him on that bus route, and three, four, five months, he's gone. He needed the Word of God. He needed the Word of God. Sometime you sit down and you get it. Preacher friend, you better stay by the book. You better spend some time in that book. You better get in there and spend three or four hours at least if you think you know what you're doing. In relation to certain service, you better still spend three or four hours in relation to that service in the Word of God. After you're prepared so-called sometimes, it takes it. A preacher friend of mine up in Michigan said to me this. He said, I, he called me on the phone, I guess. He said, I think I, I don't know what I was doing there on a Sunday afternoon. He says, it's a battle to keep ahead, isn't it? I'll tell you, it is a battle. Keep messages prepared and keep yourself full and Go out to the hospitals and try to keep your own life up and your family and everything else. It's a battle to keep ahead of messages and trying to have fresh stuff for your people. It's a battle. But I'll tell you something, friend. It's a bigger battle whenever you get out of the Word of God. When you go dry, you don't have nothing to say. No battle like that battle. Good to get up and preach the Word and come down from heaven. God gives you something. It goes. It goes. It goes. It's good to sit down and start making a couple of notes and verses come in. You start writing faster and faster and faster. And you don't want to quit! And God gives you something right on there. It's good. It's good. Mary was not only one sat down, but she's commending the fact that she was a sanctified woman. The Bible says you're sanctified through His Word. The Bible says there that she heard His Word. And she has chosen that good part. In other words, she didn't just sit there and listen to the thing, get under the thing, but she's very attentive. She's not like folks that are dull of hearing. Their ears are dull of hearing and feel like they've heard the thing. And She's the type of woman to take the Word of God and for His correction needed, she'd correct it. She wouldn't deceive herself. She'd correct the thing. But the Word of God stand in judgment on her. That type of a person. You get in the Bible that way, my friend, and you hear the Word of God and choose a good part and that book will lift your spirit when it needs lifted and give you strength when you need strength and give you wisdom and be your counselors. What am I going to do? Who am I going to run to as far as, I mean, advice? Oh, I can make telephone calls once in a great while. Friend, by and large, i got to go to the Word of God as my counselor, my counselors, the Lord Jesus Christ also. Of course, the Bible do all that. Sanctify and did for her. Strengthen her. She wasn't one to complain. She wasn't somebody like Martha, felt like the poor me's and self-pities and the boo-hoo's. She was somebody strengthened by the Word of God. Never opened her mouth. I mean, she washed Jesus' feet with tears and get down before the Lord Jesus Christ. She's a good woman. She's quite a woman. Quite a woman in the Word of God. Now, you stop and think about that. There's one cumbered. There's another that's commended. Two sisters, same town. Jesus loved them both. They respond to the Lord Jesus Christ almost the same. There was a distinction. I one time talked to a couple ladies and one of them comes to church and one just visits. One got saved, one didn't. You look at those girls there, you know the sisters, both of them slim. Both of them just as kind, tender hard as anybody could be. 
Both of them work and cook, and they don't mind it at all. Their daddy had a restaurant, and man, they can set 25 people down at the table, and man, I mean, just kid around, and they enjoy it. They enjoy doing it. I went to Christmas dinner right after Christmas one time. At Brother Wayne Munn was with us just last winter to one home. And, uh, man, we sat down there, and there were two tables set up in the kitchen. I mean, two big old tables in the kitchen. There was that many people there. And we just had a good time. She enjoyed it. didn't bother her at all. I've been out and preached her daddy's funeral a little later on. And the other sister, I mean, she just served me. Man, I sat down at that table. She brought one thing after another. And you know what? There was a distinction. I mean, they had so many characteristics that were the same. The distinction was the Word of God. Salvation by the grace of God. And somebody's got a Bible knows how it's going to go. Claudia said to me, says, Mother and I have been talking and we wonder what Cindy has. What you told us has happened to her. She's told us over and over, distinction being, she's saved, now has a Bible as her guide. One last thing I want to say to you all. Verse 41 and 42, I find the Savior doing some counseling. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. One thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Jesus didn't like to see somebody troubled. You're in here tonight, you got to have a load. Jesus doesn't like it. I mean, that Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. That's the words of Jesus Christ. In the Bible, in John chapter number 5, there was a situation there where the blind and the halt and the lame, they were brought to Jesus, and somebody never did quite get to that pool. And someone else beat him to it. Jesus didn't like that. He said, Fred, what's the trouble? He says, man, he says, before I can move, somebody's already into that pool. And they're healed. I've been this way for years and years and years. One of our fellows is out preaching in a rest home. And he said, just when he got done preaching, he hears this shuffling. Somebody going like this. And he sees a guy coming out and coming down towards the front like this. And he says, what do you want? And he says, man, he says, I've been trying to get to the front. He says, for... About two months, and he says, every time I get out of my seat before I can get down there, he says, the nurse comes and gets me and puts me back in my seat. He said, I just want to come forward and tell you what Jesus has done for me. Amen. Listen, friend, Jesus don't want you troubled. But the infirmities, he don't want you troubled. Amen. Jesus Christ is concerned about you. He said, Mary, he says, you're troubled about many things. Listen, what you do, you go to the Lord. and The Lord give you some direction, steer you, and promise to take your cares. And when the too heavy just say, Lord, I'm ashamed of my weakness, and I'm ashamed that I'm... I almost want to faint in a day of adversity, but God, I've got to cast my cares on you, Lord, so I can do with them. Do it, friend. Don't hang on to them. Put them on Him. Jesus spied the problem that was there, and so He gets right down with it. Right down to the nitty gritty. Puts His finger on it. And He says, Martha, this is where the need is! Don't have to worry about going off something. Christian psych. They're goofy too, like the rest of them. Listen, friend, you go to the Word of God. When I get cumbered, I go to the Word of God. My Bible tells me that God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. My Bible tells me it's supposed to be a labor of love. And listen, patience of hope. Patiently you keep on looking for Jesus Christ to come back. My Bible tells me you turn uh, from idols, serve the living and true God, and wait for a son from heaven. My Bible tells me the love of Christ constraineth us to serve. And the Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. Never with the holy or the no attitude. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Listen, friend, I got a letter one time in the mail. And the greatest breakthrough the psychologists have found, a Christian, a preacher said to me, and he said, I want you to come to this meeting. Fifty or a hundred bucks for one day's meeting. This didn't cost me. <laughs> Praise God. I get more out of this than I would anything like that. I pitch them, man. They invite me to unbelievable things. I mean, everywhere from Michigan, Wisconsin, everywhere, all kind of seminar, 50, 100 bucks a day. And this particular case was a psychiatrist deal. And it says the course is TJTA. It said the first real breakthrough in 25 years, 110 bucks. I got a mark done. You know what I did? Pitched that thing. Folks come around me and needed some help. I just take the word of God, says he is spiritual, judgeth all things. I just get them to talk. I was a bunch of man's heart as mouth speaketh. And they get talking, so I just judge the thing from what they say. Raise the thing up alongside the Word of God. I give them all the advice I can. I pray with them. When they go out that door, that case is closed. Ain't no records for anybody. I pray about that thing and leave with God. Ain't nobody needs to worry about anybody. Find out about nothing. I just go on and help the Word of God. And away it goes. God's given me the grace that I haven't laid around. Somebody has told me stuff. I don't even know what they've told me. Later on, not that I don't care. I just try to control my mind, 
Make sure that I don't go back and dwell on every problem I've ever heard about. Somebody's messed up. Let's get it right and go on. I'm worried about somebody and what they've done. Who knows what? The dead, as far as I'm concerned, I handle it. Close the case. Goodbye, and that's it. Word of God. Are you cumbered tonight? You toting the load? You feel like your shoulders are drooping over? You feel like you're about to be bound together? I'll tell you what you do. You taken. If you fellows aren't, you ever get that way. You take and consume yourself with the Word of God. That's going to be the difference between you going on or you quitting. There have been times when I get down and I'll tell you, you don't just do the thing in five minutes. You're going to consume yourself with the Word of God. You might have to spend a few hours in there. And sometimes you'll get reading the Word of God and the problem comes back. You read a little bit more and first in your mind you're just reading words and the problem's back on you again. And you go back and start to think over and say, God, give me some help and start pleading the blood and you go back to that thing again. I'll tell you what, friend, you'll stay with it. You'll stay in that Word of God. For the soon the Word of God will have all your attention. And the problem seems like it's there. I guess it's over there somewhere. That's a distinction. Now, you fellows know like I know. There are preachers starting and stopping all the time. It grieves my heart when I hear about somebody who's went down. When I hear about somebody who's preaching the Word of God and I don't call myself as nobody. So I'm going to be the Lord to get me on. Keep me going. But it grieves my heart. And I know if everybody here that's preached, preach like you have, and friend, don't you ever cool it. I mean, let's crank it up. I mean, when everything's getting cold and dead and everything else, let's crank it up! Amen. Not yet, ditter. Let's go. Consume yourself with your message. Consume yourself with the Word of God. And I'll tell you, that'll be the difference between you going on or going back to selling insurance, teaching school, or whatever else you got. That's the difference. The Bible do it. Down in Carl Lackey's church down in South Carolina, somebody told me the original sign of these twins are buried down at Bo Lackey's churchyard. But that's not the thing I want to call your attention to. It's this. Even though they were joined one to another, like Siamese twins are, you know something? They were definitely different. One was just an old drunk, would have nothing to do with the Word of God, and the other one had all the character in the world. You know something, friend, sitting here tonight? Some of you folks, my old Baptists, you join together. You know something? Things are going to keep you going on. And there's a distinction. The thing that's going to keep you going is going to be the Bible. One thing is needful. I want to be a different Christian. I want to be a distinct Christian. I ain't worried about who thinks what. I don't worry about my style. I can't do it. I mean, I just, I don't have it. I used to try and read all kind of preacher's books on the art of telling illustrations, the art of this and the art of that. Brother Bruce McDowell come in, blow everything you read to pieces. <laughs> He'd come in there, I mean, without an outline hardly, and just come on in, just preach the Word of God, and the power of God would fall. And I found out very quickly, that's all you need. That's all you need. Some of the messages God's done most with in my church, I haven't even hardly had outlines. I haven't worried about whether they match or whether they have, and that's not to say you should never do that. If you want uh, your people to retain what you got, then you try to make it stick together and Shoot down the straight alley. And it'll, it'll help me out a whole lot. But I tell you, I want to be distinct because this book has made me what I am. I want to be distinct and not my brains or anything else. I want to be distinct because I just kept on riding the ship out. When Jesus Christ comes back, I want to be somebody that's firing it up. I don't want to love me to wax cold. I don't want to be cold and dead. I want to be preaching stronger and stronger and stronger than Jesus Christ coming back. And I know you do too. One thing is needful. Mary hath chosen a good part. What about you? Let's bow for prayer. I hope God's dealt with your heart if it needs to be dealt with. If God hasn't really dealt with your heart, then I hope that He's given you a phrase. Sometimes God just gives you a phrase that's a real help to you. I often think of some of the things, you know, I mean, like 
Here it says this little thing, sir, we would see Jesus. And I just think of that all the time. God just has placed that on my heart. Maybe because I'm a preacher, maybe because I just want to come back, I don't know. There's other things in the Word of God, like one thing I know, whereas I was blind, now I see. When I first got saved, I didn't know much Bible, didn't know nothing, absolutely nothing really. I knew I lost, needed a Savior, and Jesus was my only hope. Got saved. But I took that verse and always felt like I I was blind, but now I see I know where I'm going. If I can't handle everybody's questions, I, I know one thing, know where I'm going when I die. I think about other phrases like, they saw no man save Jesus only. And I just desire to preach on that. If I, if I could do the thing justice and God would let me, I'd love to preach on that, I think, at least every other message. And one in between be, sir, we would see Jesus. I just want to preach on him all the time. Maybe God hasn't even given you a phrase. I hope he's given you a word. I hope it's been something to stick and help. And dear Father in heaven, Lord, I'm just praying and asking you, Lord, to bless what's been said. Lord, bless these preachers here. and Lord, there's not a whole lot of them here now this evening, but Lord, there's some. And Lord, I'm praying now that things get a little bit tighter and opposition on every hand. Lord, I'm praying that everyone that's here, Lord, will just get a little stronger. God, I pray that, Lord, you would put a fire in our bones, Lord, that God never, never quit and never, Lord, just get stronger. And Lord, I know where it's at. Lord, it's in the Word. I know where the fire is at. I know it, Lord. I know it. And God, I'm praying that you really do something to our hearts. And bless Brother Wayne Munn, this church and the folk here and these Christians, Lord, may they stiffen up and may they shoot out of here like a cannonball. And God, may there be a, Real witness, Lord, may be the good, strong church and knit together in the bonds of Calvary when you come back. And Lord, as I think about the ones I've seen and was here before, Lord, Lord, I'm blessed just to see him once again. Lord, there sits old brother Tom, Lord, just shouting the glory. It's a blessing to my heart. And different ones round about, Lord. It encourages me. May they realize no man lives to himself and no man dies to himself. And this church is important to Bible believers in Canton. Father, Lord, impress upon them the need of time in the Word of God. And for the preachers, Lord, I pray that they'd bury themselves in the book. Lord, they'd consume themselves with the Word until the problems and the work itself is just a very small thing. God, deal with us by your Spirit. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, Brother Martin.